When the townspeople were coming to watch the building, one of the things I'm sure they were very interested in was what were they gonna put in this rounded area back here at the very end of the church? They were going to place an altar. Every church has a place of communion and all, and cathedrals, of course, have an altar. This is Kentucky stone. It's about five inches thick. It's about 30 inches deep and more than 10 feet long. One piece of stone, one rock, as they say. This was the original altar that Bishop Leges had his first mass here at this cathedral in 1819. It was built into the wall on supports, on stone supports, when they were building the outside walls. Now I say that when you're trying to move a stone of this size, you wouldn't want to wait till the doors are on and all of the openings have been narrowed down. You want to bring it in while there's still plenty of room to use again, whether it's horsepower or man muscle to bring this in. We're very fortunate that this was saved because in the late 1870s, it was lowered underneath this building. When I say lowered, with ropes and pulleys, probably just about how it was raised and lowered under there because they decided to renovate the church and bring a more Victorian look to it, a Rococo look, very elaborate wooden surrounds and all. And they decided this was too plain. It didn't fit the idea of what the cathedral should look like. So they tied ropes around it. They opened the floor up, took the boards out of the floor, lowered it underneath, and it lay under this area, very close to where I'm standing, for 100 years. I think it's a great example of how if you don't destroy something, if you just put it aside and save it, you can always go back, retrieve it, and use it again. And this has been on this site now since 2008. We celebrated this, the creation of the Diocese of Bardstown in 2008, and part of that celebration was to put this altar back where it belonged. At one point in 1830, this altar had five bishops to be here for a ceremony. Five bishops in 1830, five Catholic bishops in one place would only take place in something like New York or Baltimore or, or maybe even Boston if you were fortunate. This was Bardstown, 1830. But Bishop Flaget, Bishop David, the visiting bishop from uh, Philadelphia and the uh, Francis Patrick Kendrick, who became Bishop of Philadelphia, and a bishop from um, Cincinnati, were all here, five bishops in front of the altar at one time. It would be 2008 before we had five dignitaries that important back before this same altar again. On the altar, you can see today, a, we say a brass, I'm not sure it's all brass, I think some of it may be bronze, a very elaborate metal box. This is called a tabernacle. And in the tabernacle is where the host or the communion is stored when the mass is not being served. If it looks rich, uh, very elaborate, it is. And it was a gift, a gift from Charles X, King of France. Now, how did Charles X know about Bishop Flaget and Bardstown Cathedral? Often people who visit us wanna know why we have all these gifts from Europe here. Well, Bishop Flaget was a Frenchman born close to the village of Bion in France. His uh, assistant, Father uh, Bishop David, was also a Frenchman. He had Belgian priests. He had priests from Italy. Europe supplied the priest here for the early American Catholic Church. When Bishop Flaget began the process of having this cathedral built, he knew he was going to need decorations. Decorations might not be the right term, but uh, improve things for the cathedral to make it look more like what he was used to in Europe. He sent two of his priests to Europe to ask for gifts, gifts of money and gifts of uh, things like candlesticks, pictures, things of this sort. And what we have today being displayed are some of those gifts that he received. Not all of them because he shared them with other churches in his diocese. But this tabernacle, Charles X, gave it to the, this cathedral. And up until the time it arrived in the middle 1820s, they only had a wooden box covered with oiled silk. 
oiled silk sounds rather wild, but the reality, it was like painted, it was de decorated. They did not have this beautiful tabernacle. On the side of the tabernacle, you can, if you inspect it very closely, you see the coat of arms of the King of France. When they renovated this altar in the 1870s and they took the stone out, they took the tabernacle also and they put something else there. Often I think we want something new and different, not realizing that what we already have is, is, should be valued for the heritage and the history that goes with it. But again, no one threw it out. It was still kept and we still have it today.